Hey, this is Stephen Platinum, your friend in wrestling with Platinum vs. NXT from January 13th, 2021. Um, man, I gotta say, NXT really did a great job. I think having the Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Classic to focus on and making sure we had a really great main event, it really felt like a throwback kind of wrestling show where every match was solid in its own way. We even had a palate cleanser match where Zeli um, demolished somebody right before the main event, which I think really set the stage really nicely. Um, they didn't have anything that really knocked the show off of the rails, and it was really great to see. Again, NXT really beginning to come into its own and not feel like a lesser version of Raw or a lesser version of SmackDown, but really its own distinct kind of show crowd is hyped um, and that helps a lot when you have actual bodies there making noise it's just a world of difference from a bunch of people on a screen it simply is we got wade barrett there of course thick joseph and as usual remotely beth phoenix we've got the dusty classic graphics around the arena and the dusty cup on display and we're opening with Shotzi Blackheart showing up in her tank and again not with a 20 minute promo segment just Shotzi Blackheart showing up she is over like Rover guys let me tell you and an absolute cool person let me just say that and uh, taking on Candice LeRae match is very good um, and at the end um, Candice wins thanks to some um, interference and uh, it is what it is. I think Shotzi can afford the loss, most certainly. Candice LeRae probably needed the win more than she did, if I'm being completely honest. But again, I'm more interested in how, how high the quality of show was overall, and this was a great way to open. I gotta say, this show, book-ended-wise, great opener, and a perfect way to close with a really exciting tag match for this first round of this Dusty Classic. And then having that palate cleanser right before the main. It's just an expertly run show this week. Uh, but they do show that Finn Balor walking backstage. But it doesn't go into the commercial right away, which is nice. So, out steps Pete Dunne from a black SUV, and he's got the NXT Tag Team Champions with him. Uh, they're entering the building, and we go to commercial. And we're back from the break, and uh, Finn Balor is wrapping up his entrance. He talks for a moment. He wants to talk about Kyle O'Reilly. He wants to talk about how he's great, but just not as great as him. And then the music interrupts, and here comes Pete Dunne. With the tag champs, Birch, right? Lorcan. Um, Dunn takes the mic. They're all talking. And, and then they uh, start beating Balor down with the triple team. The crowd's not happy about it. But O'Reilly makes the save for a pop. Now O'Reilly's getting triple teamed. And now Adam Cole and Roderick Strong are out to make the save. The heels retreat. The Undisputed Era stands tall in the ring together. And Balor looks on from behind them. Um, pretty cool stuff. Uh, some things up in the air, matchup possibilities float in your head. It's nicely done by NXT. And again, it's not using one half of the show to promote the other half of the show, but setting things up for later. It's so nice. Mackenzie Mitchell's backstage with Johnny Gargano. He wants to beat up Dexter Loomis tonight. And then, um want the way to win the men's and women's Dusty Cups. Um, Austin Theory walks up. He's got an envelope. It's got two drawings in it from Loomis. There's one of Theory and one of Gargano. They're both upset by this. Okay. Got to keep up the gimmick. I like it. The announcers hype the mystery debut of MSK tonight in the first round of the Dusty Classic. The announcers wonder who that is. We got a first round match, the Grizzled Young Veterans versus Ever Rise. Really good match here. At the end of the day, the Grizzled Young Veterans win as they should. They're going to finish the winners of the way against Kushida and Lee on Rough. So, 
Got a video package with Raquel Gonzalez, who right now is really hot shit. I mean, she just beat Rhea Ripley. So she's talking about Rhea Ripley in the last last week's Last Woman Standing win. Um, now she makes it clear she's focused on the NXT Women's Champion Io Shirai. Makes sense to me. Again, logical progression of things based on who wins and who loses and who should be next. Um, take notes, Raw, and to a lesser extent, SmackDown. Um, Johnny Gargano and Dexter Loomis in a non-title match. That's a good thing to set up, and then they go to commercial. But again, they still suffer from this weakness of they set us up for something, and then they come back from commercial and doing something completely different. It's a very WWE thing to do, and they don't understand how that kind of messes up the flow of their show. Constantly, mildly disappointing fans on a subconscious level, if not a conscious one. It's a bad habit to get into. That's what I'm saying. Um, Mackenzie's in the back with Shotzi Blackheart. Um, she's of course disappointed, but she's not going to whine about it. That's what makes her baby face, right? I'm not going to whine about it. She is looking at the first ever NXT Women's Dusty Classic. She knows Candice and Indy Hartwell is going to be in it. So she needs to find someone she can rely on. Good promo. It makes sense. Ember Moon appears. Uh, Ember Moon says it isn't just a tournament. It's a chance to make history. And they both agree to go balls to the wall. I loved it. And Shotzi howls. Star stuff there. Like it. Gargano versus Dexter Loomis. Gargano's title is not on the line. Um, but Gargano ends up rolling up Loomis for the win. Oh, God. Can we please only have one roll up? Let us hope. Um, Loomis attacks Theory with silence again. Um, Gargano saves him. Stuff happens. Um, boy, uh, Kushida shows up. Um, stuff goes down. Basically, Kushida gets that title and he throws it to the mat and poses at Gargano. Good stuff. Again, building up stuff for later. I love it. Mackenzie Mitchell is backstage with Pete Dunne and the tag champs. She asks about what happened earlier. They start talking about the Undisputed Era, how they need to keep their nose out of the business. Yay, feuds. Dunn says, Kyle O'Reilly just put himself between he and the NXT title, so they got to take O'Reilly out. Dunn and the champs walk off. Oh, love it. Setting all this stuff up for later. It's so nice. Um, Wade Barrett had a sit-down interview with Timothy Thatcher and Tommaso Ciampa to promote next week's Fight Pit 2 bout. Um, Thatcher was injured, but he's ready to go. Um, really nice build. It really, uh, it really did have an MMA feel, and that's what they were going for, and that's what it is. It's big fight feel. Good stuff. God, it's just a really good NXT show. Um, the best one that they've done this year, which I know isn't saying much, I would say the best one they've actually done in months. Fan-fucking-tastic show. Back from the break, Undisputed Era is backstage with McKenzie. They're not worried about the tag champs or Pete Dunne and that kind of thing they say. Um, Kyle O'Reilly says he's going to be at ringside for the Dusty Classic to make sure nothing out of the way happens. I think that's smart. It's nice to see baby faces being smart. Um, we got MSK versus Jake Atlas and Isaiah Swerve Scott. What's MSK, you may ask? So, smartly, they have Jake Atlas and Isaiah Scott in the ring first. Who is MSK? It's Wesley and Nash Carter. Um, in case you didn't know, that's the former Desmond Xavier and Zachary Wentz. They were known as the Rascals in Impact Wrestling. Now they're MSK. Good match. Boy, this is definitely a... It's a kind of an Impact-style tag match. A lot of spots... Um, really big stuff. We got 450s and all this kind of stuff going on. At the end of the day, though, uh, running Blockbuster and MSK wins. Great debut. Great debut. They head to the Dusty Cup. 
Atlas and Swerve are having some words at ringside. They're going to, MSK is going to face the winners of, let me see, notes. Um, the winner of Kurt Stallion and August Gray against Killian Dane and Drake Maverick. So MSK is going to advance in this thing, I think. Quite a few, uh, for quite a couple of rounds? Yeah, quite a couple of rounds. Come on, Steve. Anyway, we get a promo for the first ever NXT Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Classic for the ladies. Next week, see, they're telling us matches in advance. I love it. Caden Carter and Casey Catanzaro against Tony Storm and Mercedes Martinez, who I adore. We got Zia Lee and Boa training. Badass stuff. Kicking him in the chest and mystery woman looking on. And Zia's going to wrestle next and we go back to commercial. Awesome. And again, oh man, they just need to time these things better because then we go back from the break end. It's Karrion Cross and Scarlet. Okay. Uh, they got their eyes on Finn Balor, which I think is great. You can have more than one try people trying to challenge him. I like it. Zia Lee against Enhancement. Destroyed. Looked great. It's what it should be. Payoff is happening. Leah and Boa go back to the mystery woman. It's so good. Uh, Ketanzaro and Caden Carter are backstage talking about how they're going to win this first ever Women's Dusty Classic. I love it. We're giving everybody camera time. All the promos make fucking sense. I love it. We see tag teams walking backstage for tonight's main event. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. During the break, we see that uh, Isaiah Scott and Jake Atlas were back having words. Officials trying to keep them apart. Bronson Reed stepped up and got in Swerve's face, telling him to relax. And then they kind of faced off. And that's it. Again, a little more nuanced relationships. Not everything ends in a fight uh, until they're going to make you pay for it or want your eyeballs on it for sure. The announcers hype next week's show because they actually have it all booked out, um, you know, like AEW does, and it's great to see from NXT. All right, we got the Undisputed Era versus Brizango. Um, I love the Brizango entrance so much. That's where I got my screenshot to use. <laughs> um, this match was fucking phenomenal, fucking ball. Holy shit, was it great! My God, Undisputed Era win. Um, and then Colin Strong immediately go check on O'Reilly at ringside because Dunn and the tag champs um, did their dirt. Good shit. We see Balor da also down next to O'Reilly at the bottom of the ramp as they tend to O'Reilly. Uh, Balor and the Undisputed Era stare up at the stage as they're taunted. Dunn stares down at Balor as NXT goes off the air. Fucking home run show. Maybe my favorite NXT show I have seen since they've been on Wednesday nights. I'm being honest. And honestly, I want to get this thing out so I can do my Dynamite report. So I'm going to end it here. Again, little things wrong with NXT, but they're so minor compared to what the problems used to be. And just a fucking crackerjack dynamite show. I hate tournaments as a rule, but they're doing it right here and they're giving everybody their camera time and they're making everything seem important. But some things are definitely more important than others, which is how it should be. This has been Stephen Platinum, your friend in wrestling with Platinum versus NXT. Now, Dynamite.